Hello everyone, welcome to Homeschool Autism Life. My name is Jamie and this week's video is all about our summer plans. Now we are not year-round homeschoolers. We do take a good July and August off for our homeschool due to the fact that my children have friends in the bricks and mortar school and so them having time off at the same time as their friends has been important to them and I want to respect that for them. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're not learning. <laughs> it doesn't mean that we're taking complete time from doing any school. I love to take this time to really highlight some of the things that the kids are working on uh, still, the things that they might be struggling with. And I do like to, for Darian in particular, I like to keep up as much as possible his school routine. So for him, he is more this year round homeschooler and it gives me time to really pour into him. Uh, I've been trying to get him to do more life skills, more things that um, will require less of me to be involved in over the course of the summer. That's really one of my major goals for my autistic son, Darian, um, because even just getting him dressed, mommy has to be on him a lot in order for that to happen. And he usually ends up getting dressed when I'm ready to do school with him about two o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm really wanting some of those skills to happen earlier. Um, we just got off of, of being sick for about two weeks. And so of course, all of the progress that I had made towards that fell by the wayside because he wasn't getting dressed at all. And so this summer, I really want to start getting those things more focused, more on, on board for him. So for my girls, though, it's a little bit different. We take time off. Uh, but with my daughter in particular, my youngest, she had issues with her eyes. Um, I'll leave a link down to the video where I talk about eye therapy and how beneficial that has been to her. But she is not somebody who enjoys reading. She doesn't have the best memory. And so doing certain things in math have been more difficult. So for we do Matthew C Delta at the end of this school year, she will not have completed that. We've taken our time, really helped solidify some of those Matthew C uh, facts with the manipulatives and stuff. And now we're just trying to get those math facts into her brain so that she can find doing the later uh, lessons where you're multiplying three digit numbers together, um, those sorts of things, they won't be such um, a hardship because she has those math facts memorized. So that's the big plan for her and how I plan to do that. And I think I'm not sure which video I talked about this, but I had tried to do um, the Good and the Beautiful, um, Math Facts, uh, Musical Multiplication. I found it to be difficult for her because the Math Facts aren't in any particular order. And while she's really good at music, she loves the songs, but she'll put different numbers to each song. And of course, then the answer is not correct. So I'm not sure if we will do this over the summer again. It might work better because she does have some of her math facts memorized so it might be a little bit easier but we'll see i'm not sure my main approach to this is going to be little old plain old flashcards with mummy time <laughs> um I have printed off all of these. I'll try and leave a link down below to where I got these, but they were free. And then I just um, did the laminating and cut them out. And so each one, you know, sometimes you think, oh, well, I don't need the ones or I don't need the two times tables or I don't need the 11 times tables. And what I've done, though, is I've printed those out so that we can always have a certain level of confidence for her. That's a big thing to be able to go, oh, I know this one. And then the next time when she doesn't know it, it's not coming from a place of I don't know any of these. How am I ever going to get them done? 
Instead, it's, well, I know that one. So this one's harder, but I can figure it out. Uh, and so it's really important for me that I include her, get her excited. Um, sorry, my child's coming in and out of the house. Um, but I just, I really want to encourage that sort of a positive, I can do it, this is not impossible, which tends to be her immediate reaction when something's more difficult. Speaking of something that we are still working on is Matthew, or not Matthew C, spelling you see. Um, a big part of this for me, I just, she still struggles with spelling. Um, I've been really happy and excited with how well she's been doing in things like IEW. She writes full paragraphs, full sentences, um, but her spelling is still atrocious sometimes. <laughs> I need her to often uh, tell me what a word is because some of these rules, uh, you know, spelling or consonant chunks and vowel chunks, they're just, they're not there yet. And so while this is a really young um, student workbook, I still think it is valid for her to do. And we got away from it during the school year just because it was something that only she was doing and my time often was just gobbled up. <laughs> and so the summertime I feel is the perfect time to pick this back up again. I did notice a great change in her spelling when she was doing this. So I would like to take it up again, do it over the summer and see if I can't help her solidify as she's writing these papers that it helps her kind of solidify some of those rules. So that's a plan for my youngest. For my oldest, there's not a lot of stuff that she struggles with other than just not doing her best effort. She gets bored so easily, um, but I do want to maintain certain standards, um, certain information in her head so that by the time we start in September, it's not all gone and we're starting from scratch. So I have two of these um, Matthew C. test books that I found at the thrift store. And I just thought, you know what, since I have these, um, I'll just have her fill out one or two a week and then she still has those math facts in her brain as she's doing it just like her sister practicing the flashcards it's just to keep it fresh in her mind so that when she does move on to the next one and I can't remember I want to say epsilon is the next one she is going to finish gamma no, nope, not gamma, delta. She is going to finish delta this year, but I want her to just keep up those skills. For fun, I want to do two things with the kids, um, Darian as well as the girls, but I want to start using this bag that I found <laughs> that is filled with all of their a summer notebook pages from the good and the beautiful um, that I got. I'm just trying to find a nice page for you. Um, but I printed this out um, when the pandemic first started. And I just, I want to spend some time doing nature study with the kids. And the last few years, I haven't been able to. I will leave a link down below to nature study fail. Um, but it's, it has to do with my children and their fear of bugs. Nobody was having fun. And I'm hoping that this year will be the year I keep trying it. I keep starting it. And I hope that this is the year that we get to use this. But I have binoculars for bird watching. I have walkie talkies for staying together. And I have this little mini microscope and I just want our kids to have fun and enjoy the outdoors because our outdoor time is so short in Canada. I'm hoping that that will help. Um, another thing that I would like to do, we finished all of our um, continent studies. No, she's not. 
<clears throat> I don't know, baby. You're going to have to look for her. She's outside somewhere. Please don't play the piano. Quiet on set. Um, we finished all of Gather Round's um, continent studies. And I think we only have one left, which is Antarctica. And so I really wanted to um, do some fun stuff to just kind of reinforce some of the things that we talked about. So this is a puzzle, the flags of the world, I thought would be a fun summer activity in the rain. And then I also got this one at our thrift store and I'm super excited about it. But these pieces are actually shaped in the shapes of the countries that they are. So Mali is shaped like that. Egypt is shaped like that. And I thought that hopefully all of the pieces are there. <laughs> but I thought it would be kind of fun to actually glue this together on a sheet of cardboard and actually have it as something that we've built just to kind of solidify those continents, those countries that we talked about, and even introduce some of the ones that we haven't. So I'm really excited about that. And then read aloud. Read aloud is something that we do year round. And I'm very excited about the different ones. One of the things that I want to start implementing is we are going to be doing these nine fruits of the spirit. I will, I'm just trying to think if I have, I don't think I have a video on this. One of the things that I do with my kids on a regular basis is ask them to practice using the fruits of the spirit. They know them off by heart. And an awful lot of the time I will ask them in a certain situation, are you using the fruits of the spirit with your sister or your brother right now? And they go, no mom. <laughs> and then I discuss with them, okay, what fruit of the spirit could you use in this situation? and how could you implement it? And it's just changed how I parent. It's changed how my kids kind of deal with the situations that they're in. It's a question that I find very quickly takes the ire or the anger or the emotional intensity out of the situation because they often know, they often know that they're not handling a situation correctly. So because we've been doing that, I really wanted to highlight and talk about each of the fruits of the spirit. And so this is a devotional that I got. I got all of them from New Leaf Press. I got them all from Amazon. I'll see if I can leave a link down below. Actually, I think I got some of them from Indigo as well. But I just wanted to have these as part of our read aloud time, just a quick page or two, ask the question, and we'll just go through them for as many years as it takes to go through them. Uh, but I just, I wanted to make them something that really, oh, just highlight it in our house more than I already have. Uh, I read somewhere, and I can't remember who who I can attribute it to, but it just struck me that the fruits of the spirit were the characteristics of Jesus. And I just thought, okay, if that's true, which I truly believe that it is, that it's really important that my kids actually take the time to study them, um, not just know them, but actually study them. So that's one of the first things we'll do for our read aloud time. We are going to be finishing a book that we started back in Asia. Um, it's an interesting one about an archaeologist and his adventurous son, and they have a top time or top secret time travel project. And the son goes back to the time of Jesus. It's called the Emmanuel Project. Sorry, that's all. 
uh, search for the Nazarene. And this man from another time is transported back to the time of Jesus and he's trying to meet Jesus, but of course has lots of things happen. His dad was a part of the project and he is trying to figure out if his son is even alive or if he can be brought back, all of those kind of things. And it was just, it's a long book and it was really interesting and my kids really enjoyed it. But I did have to take a break because we had moved on to other units. So summertime is the time to finish this one. This one I'm thinking that we're going to do over the summer. It may, depending on how long some of our other read alouds go, it may become one that we read um, for the mini unit Growing Up With God. That's the one. But You Are Made To Make A Difference by Max Licato. Um, and I think his wife as well, I think, or maybe sister, Jenna Licato Bishop. Anyway, um, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this book is because of, oh, what's his name? Rick Warren has a sermon about, you know, just your purpose. What What is the purpose of you being alive? And I think in this day and age, that question has become more and more and more um, important and foundational to our faith. And so I really wanted to start introducing these ideas to my kiddos so that they're getting to be um, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. And I want them to kind of have a strong foundation so that when they go out into the world, it's not a surprise that the world does not agree with, you know, a belief in Jesus or God and there's a lot of why we should live that way are you guys crazy you know like those kind of types of things and I want their foundation to be strong and firm um, last summer we read the Lord of the Rings not the Lord of the Rings we read the Hobbit <laughs> this year I would like to read the Lord of the Rings the girls and their father have watched the movies um, already, which I'm still, sh I didn't re watch the, the movies until I was in my 20s and they freaked me out. But my husband is a huge fan of J.R.R. Tolkien, which means that we will read this. We probably won't read this exact version because this is Colin's um, fancy page, fancy books, and it's on onion paper and whatever. We will probably get one that's a little less fragile, but I had, I only have that one to show you. And then the last thing I wanted to share was this book, Motel of Mysteries. We are going to be doing, as a sneak peek, if you've gotten this far in the video, we are going to be doing Viking Times, uh, Medieval Times from Gather Around Homeschool, and then it goes directly into our what we're doing for history, which is the medieval time period. We're also doing medieval times in IEW. So there's going to be a whole theme to next year, which I am super pumped and excited about. But I wanted to read this book, Motel of Mysteries, because it's uh, about in the year 4022, a group of archaeologists comes across a motel. And from the little pieces that they find in this motel, they need to figure out what um, is going on. And they get a bunch of things wrong. So a toilet is a special urn and the TV is a special place where people worship because all of the furniture is around it. It's quite interesting, but I want my kids to have an understanding of what you know, paleontology and archaeology and how much we just were sifting through shards and trying to piece together a whole picture. And it's like having a puzzle with half the picture or half the pieces. And can you discern what that picture is at the end of it? Oftentimes we're getting things wrong and then having to change and shift what we thought we knew. So 
this is one of those books that I thought was really important to share and have in our collection and I want to read it before school starts. So that is our plans for the summer. I hope that that has sparked um, interest in you, that you're excited to kind of look through and go, oh yeah, that would be a great idea. Um, I hope you have the most wonderful summer. Stay tuned on this channel. I will be talking about our curriculum picks and all of the other fun, awesome homeschool content that I love so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you later. Bye.